Welcome to our worship this morning, everyone. I hope that um, you are all having a good day. Uh, happy Mother's Day to those of you for whom that is relevant. Our opening hymn is You Are the Salt of the Earth. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. In your image we are made, Creator God. Male and female, young and old, we are your creation. You took on our life, Jesus Christ. We find you there in truth and grace within ourselves. You lead us on, Holy Spirit, in golden threads of life, in pain and joy. Thanks be to God. I hope that there are indeed some Thank children you. there. It's hard for me. Hello. To say. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm glad to have you with us today. And it's, it seems so odd to hear Rachel's voice coming out of the speakers up there. <laughs> <laughs> so today, because it's Rogation Sunday, which is um, about um, creation, I thought I would read you a little story called. Fergie cleans up. I, think I might have read you a Fergie story before. Fergie is a frog who lives in a swamp with his brother Fred and his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Frog. That's the only name that we have for them. Um, and some friends who are not all frogs. But um, so I am. I have. I have taken pictures of the pictures so you can see them. One summer day, some human campers pitched a tent near the stream that led into the swamp. Fergie the frog was very excited. He had never seen people so close before. Fergie and his brother Freddy watched them with interest. The campers hung their food in a tree so animals couldn't eat it. They put bottles in the stream to keep their drinks cool. Do you suppose they sleep in the mud? asked Fergie. No. no, said Freddy. They probably sleep in trees, like raccoons. 
no. then the bears won't eat them or their food. The next morning, Fergie woke up to find his mud hole covered in white bubbles. Hey, what's this, he asked. Camper fizz, said his mother. The humans threw their dishwater into the stream, and now this foam is all over the swamp. Fergie made a face. Ick. At supper, it got worse. The campers walked to the swamp and dumped the charcoal from their barbecue into the frog's living room. Mm. It won't start a fire here, one of them said. What do you mean, yelled Fergie? It could start a fire in my bed. Do you want roast frog for breakfast? He was hopping mad. So mad, he hopped on a piece of charcoal and sizzled his foot. Oh, no, he croaked. Listen to the frogs, Jane, said another camper. Isn't it great to be away from the city noise? The frogs decided they would move until their house cooled off. They went off in different directions to look for safe places to hide. Fergie was in some tall reeds not far from the stream when it happened. The campers dumped their garbage. They dumped their garbage into the tall grass right on top of Fergie. Hey, watch out, he croaked. And then, clunk, a big glass pop bottle fell on Fergie and knocked him out. Two hours later, the search party found him. Oh, Fergie groaned. He couldn't move. The bottle had pinned his legs to the ground. Fergie, cried Mother Frog, are you all right? He moaned again. I can't move my legs. I think they're broken. The whole frog family heaved on the bottle until it rolled away, and then they carried Fergie to a safer place between the roots of a tree. As his mother bandaged his legs, Fergie asked, Were those campers trying to kill me? No, Fergie, I don't think so, she said. They just never thought about you. She shook her head sadly. They just never thought. For a long time, people just never thought about looking after animals and streams and trees and fresh air. We were like the campers in the story, dumping our garbage wherever we liked, never stopping to think that it might hurt the plants and animals. Now we know that unless we are more careful, the things we do and the way we live can hurt the earth. God made human beings to look after the earth and to take care of all the beautiful plants and animals. So stop and think. Make sure what you do is not hurting anything God made. Let us pray. Dear God, you made the beautiful butterfly and the funny frog. You made the gentle breeze and the roaring ocean. Help us look after all these beautiful things. Make us stop and think so that we can live together safely in your world. Amen. Wow. Was in a story? Yeah, it's easy to just not even think about the way that the things that we do impact other things on the planet. And because it's rogation today, we are going to do a little blessing of some seeds and some plants because rogation is all about celebrating the miracle of life. If you think about it, in these little containers are a bunch of tiny, hard little seeds like the ones in the picture. And it doesn't really look like much of anything, but I think of seeds as a miracle in a package. 
because you put it in the ground and you give it water and light and it turns into a plant. I mean, how amazing is that? So we are going to bless these seeds and I have taken a bunch of radish seeds and made up little packages with about 15 or so radish seeds that I'm hoping I can distribute to a bunch of well, kids and adults. Anybody who would like to throw some radish seeds into a pot or something, they can sit on a windowsill. And I've got um, a couple of cuttings of a plant that I made, which is called, the plant's called Moses in the Bulrushes. Um, it's an indoor plant, not an outdoor plant, but it grows little seed pods that look just like like the little basket that Moses was in the bulrushes, and so it's named. So these are cuttings from my plant at home that I would happily give to somebody to enjoy. And I think these are bedding plants from Mary. So let us pray. Creator God, source of all life, be present here as we greet these tiny seeds with their gift of life. God, we hold up before you these seeds, so small and yet in the mystery of death and burial, able to produce new life. And we hold up before you these plants already on their journey of life. As we sprinkle them with water, the sacred sign of life. We ask that as they are embraced by the earth, fed by rain and kissed gently by the sun, they will grow into the full abundance they were created for. In caring for these seeds and plants, we shall experience that most ancient job of the human family, being workers in the garden. Soon we will plant these seeds in the dark earth, so that they may give up their life as a seed in order to become the plants they hold within. Bless these seeds, pregnant with life, so that they may teach us the Easter secret of life coming out of the darkness of death. And bless these plants, that they will grow into the full abundance that you have placed within them. Amen. And our song is Sing a Happy Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we explore the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we are listening for the word of God. Don't forget to tell me if you would like me to send you some seed. A reading... Okay. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is bringing you to a wonderful land, a land with streams of water 
springs and wells that gush up in the valleys and on the hills. A land of wheat and barley, vines, fig trees, and pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. A land where you will eat food without any shortage. You won't like a thing there. A land where stone is hard as iron and where you will mine copper from the hills. You will eat, you will be satisfied, and you will bless the Lord your God in the wonderful land that God has given. But watch yourself. Don't forget the Lord your God by not keeping God's commands or case laws or regulations that I am commanding you right now. When you eat, get full, build nice houses and settle down. And when your herds and your flocks are growing large, your silver and gold are multiplying and everything you have is thriving, don't become arrogant, forgetting the Lord your God, the one who rescued you from Egypt, from the house of slavery, the one who led you through this vast and terrifying desert of poisonous snakes and scorpions, of cracked ground and no water, and the one who made water flow for you out of a hard rock, the one who fed you manna in the wilderness, which your ancestors had never experienced, in order to humble and test you, but in order to do good to you in the end. Don't think to yourself, my own strength and abilities have produced all of this prosperity for me. Remember that Lord your God, God is the one who gives you the strength to be prosperous in order to establish the covenant he has made with your ancestors. And that's how things stand right now. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Or some things will show us in your righteousness. O God of our salvation, O hope, O hope for the ends of the earth and of the, of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are, are girded about power. with might. You still the roaring of sea. The roaring of their waves and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the end of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it be plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness. And your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. And the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys clothe themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Glory to God. Source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter to Timothy. Devotion to God is in fact a way for people to be very rich, but only if it makes them satisfied with what they have. When we came into the world, we brought nothing, and when we die, we can take nothing out. So if we have food and clothes, we will be satisfied with that. People who want to be rich bring temptations to themselves. They are caught in a trap. They begin to want foolish things that will hurt them. These things ruin and destroy people. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have turned away from what we believe because they want to get more and more money. But they have caused themselves a lot of pain and sorrow. But you do belong to God. You should stay away from all these things. Um, always try to do what is right, to be devoted to God, and to have faith, love, patience, and gentleness. We have to fight to keep our faith. Try as hard as you can to win that fight. 
take hold of eternal life. It is a life you were chosen to have when you confessed your faith in Jesus, the wonderful truth that you spoke so openly and that so many people heard. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank be to God. Our gradual hymn is God of the Sparrow. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A father went out to plant his seed, a farmer. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on the fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he had said this, he called out, Anyone with ears here should listen. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, for most of history, people experienced the divine, the holy, in the rhythms of life, death, and rebirth. And so celebrations like rogation were a natural part of the rhythm of life. But for most of us, our only direct experience of nature is through activities like hiking or gardening. So I think it's important to remind ourselves that not only is our life a gift from God, so too is all life. And our life is intrinsically tied to all life on this planet. Our technology and our science allow us to take creation for granted in a way that our ancestors or even people in poorer parts of today's world never could. And that allows us to live a very comfortable life but it also allows us to ignore the impact we are having on the world. Now, there is no question that we have gained a lot in our world of medicine and vaccines and clean water and food whisked to our door from every corner of the planet. It allows us to live lives of ease and health that our ancestors could only dream of but we're also starting to realize that there's a price to pay for how we've been doing it. But it's not 
just our practices that need to change, but our very attitude and way of thinking about the world. As Christians, we affirm that the world belongs to God. Despite what some people like to claim, the Bible tells us that all creation is loved by God and it has intrinsic value. And creation is where we experience God. Henry David Thoreau wrote, I enter a swamp as a sacred place, a sanctum sanctorum, which means the holy of holies, a place where we encounter God. Now, our society is traditionally considered swamps to be waste places, best drained and made productive. But Thoreau reminds us that they are places where the creative power of God, the abundance and exuberance of God are experienced. And science tells us that swamps are a central and vital part of the ecology of this planet, and we mess with the working of God's creation when we eliminate them. Swamps are just one example of the way we tend to value land by its utilitarian usage for us. Sadly, our whole culture tends to look at land as well as other life forms in terms of how much use we can make of them. How good is the land for building on or for growing food on? How useful are the plants or animals to us? Can we eat them or develop new products or medicine from them? Hence our desire to literally drain the swamp. As Mark Wallace wrote, in our time, nature has been commodified and domesticated like a piece of real estate or a consumer item that is bought and sold in order to maximize profits. Nature no longer functions as wild and sacred space for the eruption of the sublime or the manifestation of transcendence. We have exchanged the power and mystery of the earth for the invisible hand of the marketplace. And we are all the poorer for it. We have exchanged the power and mystery of the earth for the invisible hand of the marketplace. And we are all the poorer for it. I think Wallace is right. And I believe that all creation is sacred because God is in all things and in all places. All creatures are beloved by God. All creation has worth to God. We may think things like mosquitoes must have been some kind of a mistake. But in truth, they're an essential part of the web of life a web of life that is too complex and interrelated for us to even really fully understand, let alone manage. So before we can fix the problems our collective actions are causing this planet, we need to revision our understanding of the value of creation the way God created it. And so I think our faith is an essential part of that revisioning. Wendell Berry wrote, to live, we must daily break the body and shed the blood of creation. When we do this knowingly, lovingly, skillfully, reverently, it is a sacrament. When we do it ignorantly, greedily, clumsily, destructively, it is a desecration. In such desecration, we condemn ourselves to spiritual and moral loneliness and others to want. So, I'm inviting you to think of your interactions with this planet, all of them, a sacrament. This world that we are a part of 
is a sacred body in need of our loving care. And I think before we can care for the world in an appropriate way, we need to truly love this world that God created, this world that God loves. And that requires far deeper connection than just intellectual understanding of the effects our actions have or simple knowledge about problems like climate change or plastic in the ocean. In this time, when so many voices are, quite rightly, focusing on the crisis of climate change and ecological loss and pollution and overpopulation, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and to feel like the problems are so huge that it's just too much for us to even make a difference. So why bother to even try? As Leanda Haupt wrote, no single human can work to save the orcas and protect the Amazon and organize anti-fracking protests and write poetry that inspires others to act and pray in a hermit's dwelling for transformation and get dinner on the table. How easy it is to feel paralyzed by obligations. How easy it is to feel lost and insignificant and unable to know what is best, to feel adrift while yearning for purpose. And she's right. None of us can do everything that needs to be done. But I think our sin is in stopping there. It is absolutely true that none of us can fix all the problems of the world. But it's also true that we are all part of a much bigger whole. The problems that we face in the world were created by millions of small decisions, including our own. And we can help to fix them by being mindful and taking care in what we do and how much we travel and what we buy and what kind of car we drive and what we eat and how much meat there is in our diet, the only way we can fix the problem we have collectively created is by joining our own actions and decisions and political influence into the greater whole. But to do that on an ongoing basis, day after day, year after year, we need a deep sense of purpose and connection to creation. We need to keep our love and connection to creation alive in our hearts because we only protect and care for what we love. So I invite you this Mother's Day to not only honor your human mother and grandmother, but Mother Earth and our Mother God who birthed us all into being. I'm going to close by sharing a few thoughts and prayers about God and creation written by others. So sit back and relax and reflect with me on God's love for this beautiful planet we share. God showed me in my palm a little thing, round as a ball, about the size of a hazelnut. I looked at it with the eye of my understanding and asked myself, what is this thing? And I was answered, it is everything that is created. I wondered how it could survive since it seemed so little it could suddenly disintegrate into nothing. The answer came, it endures and ever will endure because God loves it. And so everything has being because of God's love. Julian of Norwich.
apprehend God in all things. For God is in all things. Every single creature is full of God and is a book about God. Every creature is a word of God. If I spent enough time with the tiniest creature, even a caterpillar, I would never have to prepare a sermon. So full of God is every creature. Meister Eckhart. Blessed be you, O God, who gave the birds their song, the whales their hum, the lions their roar, and the ocean waves their beat. Blessed be you for tuning the soul to the rhythms and songs of praise that fill your creation. Blessed be you for poets and prophets who have honored your word in ecstatic speech and faithful proclamation. Blessed be you for composers, singers, and instrumentalists who have attended to your spirit, drawing music from the silent hallelujahs of the heart, shaping breath and sound to the glory of your name. Blessed be you for congregations who have filled their lives with faith and their voices with song. Blessed be you for every creature who joins to proclaim how great is your name in all the earth. Thomas Troger. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our prayers of the people will be led by some of our young people. Loving God, you call us together as a family of faith from every time and place. You invite us to share our mutual concerns through sharing our prayers. Let our hearts respond to your overwhelming love as we pray together. Please respond to the bidding, Creator God, with help us to walk in your way. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. We give you thanks for the rain and the sun, for the insects to pollinate crops, for farmers who work the, with nature and preserve the beauty and diversity of your creation and for wild creatures enjoying your bounty of berries nuts and seeds prayer to god help us to walk in your way we give you thanks for the soil rich and precious home to countless living creatures which maintain the soil's fertility and give us food and life we give you thanks for awareness that we all depend on the earth for our daily food and for the increasing number of people who want to eat local food and have closer links with farmers. We ask for grace to recognize that we have responsibilities to care for your earth and our fellow creatures. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. We ask you to send your healing spirit to those parts of the world scarred by hatred and war. 
We ask you to help us heal the divisions in this world so that every people and every nation can sow their seeds and harvest their crops and live in harmony with their neighbors. We pray that you will bring justice to those crushed by depth and or denied access to healthy food or shelter. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. We ask your blessing on this city of Richmond. We give you thanks for the gift of this community of St. Anne's and for the wider church we are a part of. Guide us in your ways and help us to have a spirit of openness and a focus on the world around us. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give you thanks for the lives of Donald Chaslin, Claire, and Dana Galanders, Shayla Gourlay, Jim Greatbanks, and Amon Gill, Francis and Nina Greaves, and Susan Guo. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Niagara. For, uh, in our diocesan cycle, we pray for the deanery of Tri-Cities, North Burnaby, and the archdeaconry of Burrard, and for our companion diocese of Northern Philippines. Remembering especially our partner churches, St. Anne, Sale Proper, and St. Ambrose Mission, St. Grib. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. God of compassion, we hold up before you all who are lonely, heart sore, weary, fearful, pained, despairing, forsaken, and betrayed. All who are sick and suffering, we pray at this time for those around the world who are suffering and dying from COVID-19. And we pray that the world will unite in aiding the country's hardest hit by this pandemic. We name before you now those people known to us who are in need naming them either silently or aloud. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. God of the resurrection, we remember those who have died and give thanks for their lives. Grant a peaceful end to all who are dying and your comfort to all who mourn. We name before you those known to us, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. Gracious God, we ask you to send us out into the world united through your love with all creation. We pray that we ourselves will be like fertile soil producing, producing abundance, growth, rich in the fruits of the spirit. Creator God, help us to walk in your way. Holy God, we come together to thank you for the wonders of your creation. But first of all, we pray for your forgiveness for our part in the sin of abusing your world. We use more than our share of Earth's resources. We are responsible for polluting the Earth, water, and sky. We take our good fortune for granted and ignore the cost that others pay for our well-being. Let us confess our sin, confident in God's forgiveness. Almighty God, you have given us the ability to care for your beautiful planet, but we have misused our power, turned away from responsibility, and marred your image in us. Forgive us, Lord, especially for the ways we allow our society to treat your creation with callousness and cruelty. Help us to follow the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, who expressed power in humility and lordship in loving service. Enable us by your Spirit to walk in newness of life, healing injury, avoiding wrong, and making peace with all life. 
the God of love forgives you and frees you from your sin, heals and strengthens you by the Holy Spirit, and raises you to new life in Christ. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. With grateful hearts, let us give what we have. With joyful hope, let us give for what can be. Our offertory hymn is Now the Green Blade Rises. God, we bring these gifts like red raspberries in a cup, like dandelions in a bouquet brought by a six-year-old. They never seem like enough, and we are never quite enough to get the captives freed, to get the people fed, to get the good news spread. So we offer them for your blessing, confident in your grace, which makes raspberries a feast and dandelions a fragrant garden. As our Savior taught us, let us sing. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the courage of the early morning's dawning and the strength of the eternal hills at noontime and the peace of the open spaces at evening's ending, and the love of God abide in your hearts now and forever, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hallelujah, We Sing Your Praises. Go into the world rejoicing, for God is waiting to meet you and surprise you with the beauty of God's presence. In the song of a blackbird, the hooting of an owl, the cry of a fox. In the opening of a bud, the fragrance of a flower, the falling of a leaf. In the murmur of the breeze, the rushing of the wind, the howling of the gale. In the babbling of the brook, the rippling of the stream, the crashing of the waves. In the peace of the meadows, the freedom of the hills, the grandeur of the mountains. In the noise of the factory, the routine of the office, the bustle of the grocery store. God is here. God is there. God is everywhere. Go then and walk with God in the light of God's love and the fullness of life. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everyone. There's our contact information.